Hey traders, it's Nicholas here. In this video, we're going to be talking about Fibonacci retracements and the way that we use them. Now, this video is sort of like part two. Part one was a, a couple of months ago and it was a sort of whiteboard um, version where I was just drawing and explaining things by drawing on the board. So if you haven't seen that one yet, then the link's in the description box. I do suggest you go and check that one out. But the reason I'm doing this one is hopefully going to be a shorter follow up, more of like a tutorial, because I had some requests that I actually explain it on the charts as well. Inside our course, I explain it in a lot more detail on the charts. And I thought that the whiteboard presentation would give it a different angle that we might make things easier to understand. But I gather now that I need to do it on the charts for some of you guys. And it's one of those things like the way we do Fibonacci retracements is different or Fibonacci in general. It's different to what you'll see elsewhere. And so that's why I think a lot of people don't quite grasp it first time or maybe, you know, think it's a bit counterintuitive. It's not that it's difficult to understand. It's just different to what you see being taught elsewhere or what people have been traditionally using. But personally, I think this is the only way that you can use Fibonacci correctly. And I think anything else that you see is not precise enough. They're just being lucky sometimes that it's falling into the correct way. And other times they're just using a useless tool that's not working for them. So let's kick things off. Now, on my chart, what I've got here, I've drawn the Fibonacci I basically removed all the levels that we don't want. When we talk about retracements, the only levels that we use in our retracements is 38.2 and 61.8. You'll also notice that there's a 50 there, but 50 is not a Fibonacci number. It's just the midpoint of this range. So a lot of people call it a Fibonacci retracement, and I will refer to it as a Fibonacci retracement, but it's not a Fibonacci retracement at all. It's just halfway through that range. So I've removed all the extension levels. I've removed all the other levels that are on there. But let me talk you through what these levels mean, what we're using them for. So basically, the points that we've just drawn here, like let me actually draw it on some candles. Let's take this point here, and let's say we draw it up to here, up to this point here. Now what you see here, what I've just drawn, is that this here is an A point. So let me actually write this down for you so you can follow along a lot easier. So what we have over here is A, and this is B. Now the retracements for us are going to be our C point. So what we're looking at down here, is a C point that's going to be a type one or a type two close on one of these levels. Now the reason is that when you draw a range, your A to B point, then if that is correct, if that's the right range, then the retracement levels become significant levels. So as we know, significant levels attract and repel the price, and we know that that happens by a type one or a type two close. So of course, this being the significant level, type one would be like that, and type two is like that. There's another video link in the description box if you want to watch a video about that. But really, I suggest that you sign up for our free four-part video mini-series by joining our Inner Circle mailing list. It's all free, and that way you get all the foundations, so it makes these videos make more sense for you. Anyway, basically, since we know that the C point is going to be attracting and repelling the price as a Type 1 or Type 2 close, then we can confirm this range by looking for that C point. Because think about it for a second, right? How do we know ever that we've drawn this Fibonacci range correctly? How can you rely on it at all? I see people that are just like other traders or other people teaching about it who are just drawing a range and wherever it falls saying, okay, this is the Fibonacci range. So when it gets to the 50% level or whatever, I'm going to open a trade. This is utterly ridiculous because think about it. It could be here to here or what if it's here to here like this, the wick instead. How do you know it's not that? How do you know it's not down to this wick down here? How do you know it's not to that wick and this candle body? That changes where all the retracement levels are. Can you see that they're moving around? Every time I move it, they're moving around. So it, it changes it. Now, the only way you can tell is because if you know that the retracement levels are going to be significant levels, you can look for the type 1 or type 2 close. And you can see that where it is right now, we're getting that type 1 close up there. Like here. See? Type 1 close. And that's the last point on the chart. So if you look at it here... If you, let me find where our pen's gone. If you look at this situation now, we've drawn A, we've got B down here, and the very last point it touches up here is a type one on the C point. So yes, there may be situations when the range doesn't have its last touching point as a type one or type two close on the C point, and we'll miss out on those ones, but that's just fine because I'd rather have some certainty. And by having it like this, we know for sure that that's a significant level. Like the chances of that not being a significant level now are kind of slim because it's literally the last point in the retracement where it's reversed the price so we can trust that as a C point. 
So at this point, of course, if that range is confirmed, but we haven't been able to trade the retracement level, what do we do instead? Well, this is where we start trading things like the Fibonacci extension levels, or in some situations, you might want to, you know, just use it for for making sure you've got the correct wave mapped out for other tools you might be using. But let's say in this situation, we want to use an extension level. So this is just the Euro US dollar daily chart, the current price over here. I haven't cherry picked this. I've just chosen the top part of the chart. So let's add in some levels. If I add in the extension levels now, since they're below zero, they're going to be at the bottom of the range. I need to add them in as minus levels. So what we're going to do is going to add minus 0.272. That's one of our important levels because basically 1.618 is the golden mean and 1.272 is the uh, square root of that. So it's the same in the sort of the opposite side, the minus 0.272, the minus 61.8. It's just the way we do it. Again, I explain this a lot more in the course. I'm not going to go into too much detail of that now because I want to keep this just a short tutorial. I believe I do explain it a bit more in the previous part of this video, like part one. So maybe go and check that one out if you want to have more answers or ask in the comments box below. Anyway, I've put 1.272. That's actually not right. I should put minus is because I was talking while doing it, which I'm going to stop now. All right, so let's add those on the chart. And you can see what happens down here. We get the C point and the first D point is on the minus 27.2. And that is, of course, a type one close. We're always looking for the TMP, the trade move potential to be back into the range. So you can see it goes back in there. But in this situation, let's have a look at what we've got. So the initial thing was we drew our A up here and our B down here. And we had multiple places that we could have drawn it. So how do we know that it's going to be correct? We look for the C point for a type one or type two close as the very last movement, okay? Now that's over here, like the highest price. I'm not bothered too much about these where it's just wicks because um, the body of this is closed above that one. So this is the higher wave. Although having said that, with a bit of tolerance, you can see that that bullish candle does still close the type one. Anyway, so that confirms that as our C point. Now, if the next price, if up here it had gone beyond here and closed somewhere up here instead, that wouldn't be our right range and we would just scrap it. We just wouldn't use it at all. But in this situation, we had the nice A to B. We had the type one on the C, which means we're looking for our D, not that type of D, the D level, which is down here. We get the type one close. If we had a double confirmation, that could have been a potential entry enters back into the range that's our initial tmp doesn't mean that we close the trade at that point it's just that's our initial target for working out risk and reward and look what happens nice trade you're never in any trouble because you're getting higher highs higher lows at that point until like you either maybe exit here if you wanted to if you had reason to or as it's coming down at this point about here is where you're finally getting the lower highs and lower lows and you maybe exit there instead which is still the sort of end, the same point that we would have end, exited if it was the TMP over there. But I think there probably would have been good reason to exit at least one of these peaks because you can see the weakness in the market there. Anyway, that's subject for another video. What I wanted to show you is the reason that we look for this point here. So let me show you an example of where it wouldn't work. And I do realize that I'm going through this quickly. The reason is it's been a long day. <laughs> I'm tired of talking today. And also because I know that a lot of you like to have shorter lessons. So we're keeping this one quick because we already had a long part one. So let's take, for example, this wave now here. What you can see going on here. And we should be ignoring the extension levels at this point. I'm, I'm only looking like as if the price ended at this point here. We're looking at what happens over here. You can see this is our A point. This is our B. And what happens with the C is up here. So it is, it's retraced into the range, but there's no way for us to confirm that. And even if you ignore this part, right, if it was this part here instead, and it has stopped before these retracement levels here between the 61.8 and the 50, it still hasn't confirmed it because it hasn't shown that either of these levels is significant. It hasn't got a type one or type two close. And the whole point of type one and type two closes is that it's helping us find significance. We can have certainty. Now, I'm not saying that this is the wrong range, but the fact that it hasn't confirmed those levels for me, I'm not going to trust that it is the range either. And you can see that when it does get down to the 61.8, although we don't get any type 1 or type 2 closes, and the same on the, the minus 27.2, you can see there's absolutely no reaction there. So it wasn't the right range. 
So this is like, it's basically every time that we're doing these levels, it's just helping us identify logically whether it's the right range or not. So I don't believe these people that draw a range like this, if it's like say here to here, and they're looking at this like saying, oh, it's between the 50 and 61.8 and that's the sweet spot. So I'm going to open a trade there. Nah, nonsense. It's just luck. Um, you need to look for something precise. So it could be that the correct range is here, but you have to make the adjustments to try and find it. If there's a C point that touches on there, I don't think there is a very good one, although there's a gap here. So I might take this at a push and you can see that it does reverse at the minus 61.8, but I wouldn't trust to trade this one. Um, I'm using this because of the gap, but really it's not a good range for me. Now, I know that some of you that are new to this are maybe like getting a little bit lost at this point. But that's fine. I'm trying to go through this more for like when you're actually practicing this on the chart. So like I said, watch part one, check out some of the technical analysis videos that we do, then come back to this video and it could all start to make a lot more sense for you. The important thing is how you're actually using your Fibonacci range to confirm it properly. Like you need to use your logic. You can't just assume that you're always going to get the range right. You need to look for the clues that are going to help you confirm it. So this might mean that only one out of five possible ranges are actually going to be ones that you can use that get confirmed, but at least they're the more certain ones. I don't know about you guys, but I'd rather have more certainty, better success probability than having more opportunities, because if half those opportunities are bad, you're only going to add to your losses anyway. So this is the better way to do it. If you've got any questions, leave them below. If you want a part three, if you think that I've gone through this one too quickly or you still don't understand it, then let me know what parts aren't clear to you and I'll cover them. If you like this video, do hit the thumbs up if you appreciate the, the information this time, if it wasn't too confusing. And uh, subscribe for more videos about trading and financial education in general. Don't forget to sign up for the Inner Circle mailing list so you can understand more of what we're doing. And as always, I appreciate you watching. Take care. I'll see you soon.